Hello my soccer universe. Well, let's start with an odd news first. We have two more days of four games uh, on one day and then we're going to the normal schedule. We don't have the 11, 2, 5 and 8 schedule anymore. We go to straight to a 4 and 8 schedule which is so much more amenable and agreeable with my schedule and I will not have to make the review videos right after the games. Maybe I can do it the next morning if it works out this way. So let's see how this will be going. But I'm very much looking forward to it that this uh, hellscape is going over. But while I have been really, really down and I have been sending today a message to my friend Idris uh, of how I don't enjoy the World Cup that much so far. Uh, especially because there's so many dreary games. Well, we had the first match day in a long time without a nil-nil. Yay! Goal average though is still going down at a record rate. We are now just barely over 2.3. Um, and there was a theme to the early games and then the, uh, I think the late games kind of made up, up for especially the France then Denmark game I think was the best one. But I think in the early games the two teams that actually showed a little bit of initiative and you could see some technical skill out there. Those teams attacked and keep the captain losing to Australia and Poland respectively and that both of them have been heavily supported uh, because of their Arab neighbors or uh, you know living there Tunisia and so on, Saudi Arabia I did not really add to the excitement uh, over these two uh, and I really think that Australia uh, is not a great team <laughs> they just managed to get the goal and Poland is also not that great of a team at least they have some decent players in there I really thought the special second half between France and Denmark was great and then Messi saves Argentina and actually it's uh, all the results combined it's a huge swing for Argentina you see them back here on my wall on, on, on the side they are again third favorites mathematically because from what I could tell today they are not favorites and France curse what curse there's no winners curse France are through first team qualified already for the next round and actually looking rather convincing overall just want to put it out there just want to put it, i'm not saying they're gonna win it but france actually looked over quite convincing and i really enjoyed the second half i in general i thought that the france then that and again you could see that two quality sides playing against are not going all out because uh let's face it even if france would have lost it would have not been good for um, the overall uh, confidence of the team but on on the side it would not have been spelled any doom because you still could have won your group with a win in the last match so in that sense wouldn't have been that crazy as well I'm gonna start in uh, group C with the Poland Saudi Arabia game which I think again it was not the greatest of games but at least there was a little bit there um, was played of course in the Education City Stadium which had not seen any goals up until that point and Saudi Arabia came out to play and Poland was really hanging on Saudi Arabia actually looking overall quite quite good especially for the first uh, 20 or so, so minutes I, I really felt that Saudi Arabia uh, had some energy and actually tried to take the game to Poland without creating that many crazy chances. I'll also be saying it's a World World Cup is very poor on overall chances in any case. However, Poland had the physicality, uh, got a uh, few red cards, and uh, once the, they got Qatar, uh, no, no, Qatar, no, Saudi Arabia, sorry about that. Saudi Arabia a little bit uh, under control, then uh, one brilliant move by Lewandowski who gets the ball, uh, wants to lob it over the goal. He wants to make the goal, but once, once he sees that, that he cannot make the shot, he, on a turn, picks up Zielinski, and it is 1-0 uh, Poland. Teeny bit against the run of play. However, so the river can come, come back. The foul in, in the box, I can see what the VAR is seeing, and probably this was a foul. It was, it was just stupidity, but it was not such a bad foul. Let's also be honest about that. And then they had a little bit of uh, who is taking the pen penalty and it's Aldav Zari who actually um, scored the winner against uh, Argentina. I'm really tired. I'm mixing things up already. So please bear with me. And his shot is saved by Chesney. And then even better, the rebound. 
that he got the hand on there because that was gone straight into goal. And I think the 1-1 one, one would have deserved. But I think that that was the point where I actually started feeling, yeah, Poland will pull this one out because uh, the goalkeeper is running hot. And so it proved to be. And then the longer the game went, the more I saw the Poland's going to win the one. And they even get the winning goal through Lewandowski, his first World Cup goal. And you could see it means a whole lot to him to have finally done that. Uh, but it was a total hold because I saw the defenders basically falling over and the ball rolled to Le 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 Levtoski who, who chips the goalkeeper and then almost he made a, a third one for Poland which would have been way too much. I honestly think this tunnel is a ridiculous result for Poland uh, and really really tough on Saudi Arabia. However, it opened up the group for Argentina and that Argentina-Mexico game was a really rough watch unless you like it physically. The best thing were the fans. This was the first time that I really felt this is a true World Cup atmosphere with a large crowds from both teams there, loud singing, dancing, there was energy in the place. Uh, this was worthy of a final. The game was everything but. Especially in the first half. Uh, Mac Mexico did a lot of running, uh, chasing down all the uh, players. Uh, not allowing our, our Argentina much, but even, even worse for Argentina, whenever they started, started attacking, they were so static. There were no tentative runs or movements and, and so on, because Mexico was standing rather tight and always closed down the passing lanes, only le leaving a little bit open for the outside. And uh, even when they moved in a little bit towards the box on the outside, they couldn't get enough players in our RG. I mean, th one of the craziest chances was a header for Messi from 12 meters out that went like over the bar. It was not good. The best chance actually was a Vega free kick for Mexico um, that was uh, saved. But, you know, uh, one has seen this, this screen. But what this game had, especially for some, a multitude of really rough tackles and challenges that this only went with two yellow cards this first half was a little bit of a surprise to be honest because it was really rough and tough. Mexico actually uh, had to exchange Guadado and Brolin Gutierrez uh, and in a way he was then also uh, a bit responsible for what was hap happening before Argentina maybe a teeny bit better, really still not not looking good, but taking more control of the game. Uh, and there was one run of Messi where he's brought down, free kick, uh, forget it, for, forget about it. But um, when the goal came through Messi, I saw a perspective where they just focus on Messi. You see, he has the man, then his man gets lost. He has ample of space, and that's the one time that Di Maria made something that made somewhat much sense. Di Maria has the ball on the outside, he sees Messi free in the middle and Messi has ample space, can pick his corner and puts it in. Yes, on the shot, I think one of the Argentinian strikers was actually offside and it was kind of ahead of the goalkeeper so, so far that I think it was just a, or, or, or right to give this goal because I mean that would have been even uh, worse. Huge weight off the earth at their shoulders and honestly Mexico didn't do much. And so I, I was actually happy that the game was unlocked. Argentina had a little bit more space then. And in, in the end, after the corner kick, Messi plays to Fernandez, who just goes into, into, into book, goes around the player and puts it into the net. 2-0 for Argentina. And there was nothing coming back from Mexico. This is a really, really bad Mexican team. Uh, it has to be said. It's also really not... The Argentina is not looking good. But as, as we'll see, the way the tournament pans out for them at this moment, where they actually have full control now over their destiny, actually winning this group. And if they do so, I think at the moment it pans out rather comfortably for them that, that they can actually get a little bit uh, going and on the same time marching up until the semifinal. But, you know, we're getting way ahead of, of, of ourselves. At this moment, Argentina it seems like a collection of stars rather than a team. And that uh, never bodes. Well, like it got to be said. Um, going over to, to the Raguer, another team that I'm absolutely uh, annoyed by is Australia. And I'm saying this, you know how much I love Italy. I Actually, there was a time that I loved Australia more. 
in the 2006 World Cup, I actually supported Australia over Italy. This is the, jer the, 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 the jersey uh, at the, uh, of the 2006 World, World, World Cup. I really love Australia. However, this team is so pedestrian. The only thing that they do is probably can defend a little bit decently, but you know, not even sturdily. As we saw, uh, if you have some class players, they can easily take it apart. And Tunisia has some skillful players. The one thing that's, uh, that, that Tunisia does not have, um, maybe you can pull it down to maybe not having as much class, but I think uh, it is more that... Um, they are all playing a little bit for, for themselves without picking out the teammates that, uh, that are on. Every, everyone wants to win the game on, 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 on their own. And if there's a passing move, there's always a little bit of precision missing. Tunisia created enough chances to even at 1-0 down win this game. The goal through Duke was such a fluke because it's a cross in that gets deflected. And the only brilliant thing that Australia did the entire game was this header by Duke. This was not an easy header to take. But I'm really, really, and I'm wearing Australia because, you know, part, part of me, yes, wants to, to do them well. But if I'm honest, I don't want to see this Australia team at this World Cup. It is so, it epitomizes the, what this World, World Cup has been, been so far, has been a defensive struggle for most of the time because teams stay tight. And then you just stay a little, a little bit alive. And when there's a team like Tunisia that is uh, buoyed by its own fans and tries to move forward, is a little bit more proactive. They are just stifled to death because they don't have the necessary quality. And so, yeah, Australia, I quipped a little bit. They're, they're like the World Cup. There is no quality, yet it's, they're still alive and actually looking rather, rather, rather good. So part of me is very happy for them. The, the part of me always supported also, also, also Australia, but the footballing mind of mine is absolutely horrified by what this Australia team is offering. They have a real chance of moving on to the next round. All they need to do is get a draw against Denmark. Because Denmark, after that result, knew that they better win against France if they want to have a cruising next round. And I said it, I said before, even the thanks to France winning big against, against Australia. Yes, they would have had then a tie, depending on the result, but let's say that Denmark may win by a goal. They would have then been tied and Denmark would be in first place, so maybe not ideal for them. However, it would not have meant that they are going that they are going out. At least they had that's what I feel. On the other side, um Denmark actually surprising had a lot of the ball, but mostly in their own half. Um it was, took about 50 minutes and then France had full control of the game without it being so super convincing. Uh they had I think Ra Rabio had that was the biggest chance. But you could see actually that the French team is really working and um, Theo Hernandez, he should be an automatic starter for France. He should be automatic starter and he, it looks so much better. I actually was hoping that Giroud scores a goal. Uh, did not happen the, the, this time around. In the second half, then uh, just France's class came through. The opening goal from Mbappé where uh, Hernandez gives the ball to him and they make this wonderful one-two where Mbappé sends him towards the touchline and Hernandez with the first touch returns it to Mbappé who, 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 who puts it in the net. This was just the extra class that France have. Despite all the class that France have, uh, Denmark got an equalizer through Chris, uh, Christensen, which, which I think was the first shot of goal of theirs. And then even Cornelius, I think, had a huge chance I think it was Cornelius. I'm, I'm a wonder. huge chance to actually make it two-one for Dan that Denmark, where Lloris had 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 to come come up with a save, but that would have been way too much. I think France were the better team and they deserve to win this game. And it's a cross from Griezmann, uh, where Kasper Schmeichel does not look all that good on on Slayen Mbappé, just punches it in with his body in in a way. It was it was a weird break goal that I actually thought for a moment is this being called off. He has got three goals like Anna Valencia, and this is not uh, egocentric Mbappé that we saw at uh, PSG. Actually, it looks way more like a team there. And I think getting eliminated by Switzerland in the Euros, uh, followed by a win in the Nations League, and having all these injuries are three things that work very much in favor of France because you have to rely on a little bit of a younger core that has not won it all. 
still highly talented and you're and you're not given the opportunity to like play your Pogba's and Conte's who helped you win the world world cup you you refresh it up and actually for us look rather good I don't want to say they have been the best so far but they have been very convincing very professional they have enough talent there and if the backline stays stable I think France is in he, in it for real. Uh, has to be said this way. Looking now at the overall standings, um, the big one is now Poland leads Group C. However, they have to play Argentina next. So if Argentina wins that one, they most likely will win the group because they hold the superior goal difference. And so Saudi Arabia and Mexico could very be Argentina saw Saudi Arabia win it, and they go through one and two. Which actually is something that I would like to see. I'm very honest. I think I'm more uh, excited about Saudi Arabia than Poland in this World Cup. Denmark needs to win against Australia. France is already through. England is virtually through. Because if England lose 4-0 to Wales, then they're out. Or then they're in danger of getting out. Uh, however, France cannot be taken out of uh, first spot anymore. So they're literally the first team to qualify for the next round. Denmark need to uh, get a get, 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 get winner over Australia, which by pure class they should, but uh, I have a little bit of worry who's scoring goals for Denmark. Um, Tunisia, minuscule chances, chances to uh, survive, but you know, France might play a, a B squad. Um, if we look at the expected standings, uh, they tell a similar thing. I mean, I'm a little bit surprised it says Argentina over Poland, uh, but probably it's down to the rating for Saudi Arabia that they're not making enough points. It is a possibility, but Argentina is back in first spot and Australia is slightly ahead of Denmark because the draw is enough. That's that. And what that means is that air cap change is also quite some. Argentina is back in the C1 spot, so they're going out of the lower branch up into the upper branch, which gets suddenly a whole lot, lot, lot more loaded where we have Argentina now against the Netherlands in the quarterfinals and Spain against uh, Brazil with us Argentina Brazil semi-final but if we look if it really turns out this way Netherlands Iran is not such a not also I can see the Netherlands getting eliminated I don't see Iran eliminating Argentina though although who knows who actually knows I mean uh, president has been said by Saul so, so there but Argentina against Australia, I, I just don't see Australia uh, getting anything against Argentina. So it could be a rather soft way to the semifinals and then they get destroyed by Brazil. Or not, maybe, because against Brazil they will suddenly do something. For France, playing against Poland and then uh, potentially against England and Belgium also seems like a very doable way. And I'm not sure that Belgium will be there at that point. That also got to be said. Um, as for the overall favorites, Argentina back. It really, the, all the results that they needed fell their way. They have their own destiny in hands, which is a great thing because this was not clear from uh, the last round that they will have it. They are even our favorites to finish the group first. So a uh, huge boost for Argentina there. So based on their rating, they're back up top. France, of course, sits now in second place still because they're already through to the next round. Belgium still ahead of Spain, which I just cannot quite believe, but you know, they're highly rated. And then there are a few other changes there. Tomorrow's uh, game, see um, the big one, Spain against Germany. Germany could be eliminated by tomorrow, this time. Um, I also want to say everything, all the games are somewhat interesting, but uh, don't have the um, glow that Spain, Germany have. But I think the Group F, there is a lot to be played for in there. And Japan against Costa Rica, yeah, if Japan wins that one, then there's really a chance that Germany get eliminated by Spain. And that would be a sensation, but I'm not sure how good it would be for the tournament. Any case, those are my thoughts for tonight. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.